I'll start with the gas loss uh, because this is one of the very important part of um, um, thermodynamics. And gas loss, gas loss are simple relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature, and also the mass of the gases. Okay, so behaviors um, of ideal gases like air can be predicted exactly by gas loss. Now. Um, as I said, although we say air is an ideal gas, but um, still, um, you know, uh, we'll we'll see in one of the coming slides that um, um, you know, although we call it an ideal gas, but definitely it's not um, an ideal. Uh, I mean, it does not exactly follow the gas law. So what we do is we include a compressibility factors into it just to compensate for the. Um, the assumptions that we make uh, because we say that you know it's an ideal gas okay so behavior of ideal gases like air can be predicted exactly by gas loss so corrections have to be applied to gas loss to predict behavior of real gases so as i mentioned um, that's all right if um, we have just started so corrections have to be applied to gas loss to predict the behavior of the real gases um, so the main gas laws were discovered by boyle Charles, Avogadro, and Dalton. Okay, I'm sure you must have heard um, these uh, names. They might be from high schools. The Boyle's law, Charles' law, uh, Avogadro's number. So we'll uh, start with the um, with these laws. So let's start with the first one, which is Boyle's law. Uh, according to the Boyle's law, if pressure, if P is the pressure of the gas and V is the volume of the gas, then at constant temperature P times V is equal to a constant okay so when I say P times V equal to constant so for example if we have a change in the um, process um, so we have initial process as um, uh, initial pressure as P1 and initial volume as V1 and after the change um, which is at constant temperature uh, we have the second pressure as P2 and the second pressure as uh, V2 then P1 V1 is equal to uh, P2 V2 okay so that's how we define Boyle's law because what we are saying here is that you know um, that these changes are at constant temperature and the quantity of the gas is usually expressed in moles okay so moles it's the weight of the gas in grams divided by its molecular weight okay uh, so we express the weight of the gas in moles when we are doing these calculations and we say that how do we define moles it's the weight of the gas in grams um, divided by its molecular weight so Charles law what is a Charles law so if the temperature if the there is a change in temperature of the gas and V is the volume of the gas then the volume of the gas varies directly with the absolute temperature of the gas at constant pressure okay so this time we keep the pressure as constant and we have the variations in the pressure in the volume and the temperature so the relationship is V over T is equal to constant okay so if in the initial state the volume is V1 the temperature is T1 um, and the final state the volume will be V2 and the temperature will be T2 and we do it at constant uh, pressure then V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2 that's how we define the Charles law the next one is the Dalton's law so according to this law in a mixed of gases the summation of the partial pressure of the gases constitute constituents equal the pressure of the mixture so we have different gases in a mixture so all these gases have partial pressures so if you add them up that's the total pressure of the gas okay so where PA PB and PC are the partial pressures of the constituent gases so this is how we define the uh, Dalton's law. The next one is the Avogadro's law. Avogadro's law states that at a constant pressure and temperature, so we have a constant pressure, we have a constant temperature, the same number of moles of all gases occupy the same volume. So we just gave you, I just gave you the definition of the moles that 
if we have different gases and if we have the same number of moles for those gases, those gases will actually occupy the same volume. Okay, um, so it means V over N is equal to constant. So volume um, divided by N is equal to constant, where N is the number of moles. Okay, so combining Boyle's, Charles, and Avogadro's law, if we combine these three laws, we get uh, volume is actually proportional to N P over P, okay, um, or V is equal to, instead of the proportionality sign, what we do is we replace it with the constant R0, okay, which is equal to, uh, which is called as the universal gas constant and that the value of this one is 8314.47 joules per kilogram per kilomole Kelvin. Okay, so that if I combine all these laws for gases, then PV is equal to NR0T, okay, where R0 is the universal gas constant. So if I, because N is the number of moles, R0 is the universal gas constant, so for any gas, the ideal gas equation reduces to P1 V1 over P1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. Okay. So that's how we, um, when we say PV over T is equal to constant, that actually means that P1 V1 over T1 is actually equal to P2 V2 over T2. So what we can do is, if we are given with the pressure, if we are given with the volume, initial volume, initial temperature, and at any stage we have to find out the final volume or the final temperature, given that we are given with the final pressure, then we can use this ideal gas law to, uh, to find the final volume or the final temperature. The next definition is that of a specific heat. The specific heat of a gas is defined as the amount of heat per unit mass required to raise the temperature by one degree Celsius or Kelvin. Okay, by one degree Celsius or Kelvin. And the equation for that one is Q is equal to MC delta T. What is C? C is the specific heat constant. Okay, it can be at constant volume and it can also be at constant temperature. And delta T is the change in the temperature. So um, it's actually equal to T2 minus T1. So two types of specific heats are defined for gases. One for a constant volume and the other one for the constant pressure. Okay. Um, so um, either we can substitute instead of C, Cp value or we can substitute Cv value. So Q is equal to M um, C delta T. That's the general formula for the specific heat, okay, or the heat added to the system. So we can make use of this formula to find out how much heat is added into the system. So Cp and Cv are the two um, specific heat constants at constant pressure and also at constant volume. So the relationship between the two is derived by Cp minus Cv is equal to R0. So we have already defined R0. R0 is the universal gas constant. So if I go back one slide, you will see this. R0 is actually equal to, this is R0, is equal to universal gas constant, which is equal to 8314.47. The next is the compressibility. As I mentioned previously, that um, when I, when I apply these ideal gas laws, I say that you know if I'm talking about air, the air is an ideal gas. Okay, uh, ideal gas means when I compress it, you know all the particles within the air compress exactly. Uh, with this, we, we have exactly the same compression ratio for all these particles. Um, if I, if there is a change in the temperature, all particles within the gas will actually have the same change in the temperature, but that does not actually happen, okay, in, an, in a real gas. So real gas do not exactly follow the ideal gas equations. So they differ in very deep degrees. The degree in which any gas varies from the ideal is expressed by a factor called compressibility. So just this is a sort of a factor which 
uh, uh, for example, we'll you, and that's what we do in mechanical engineering that we um, um, solve it as an with an ideal situation, and then we add um, a factor into it to compensate for uh, the the issues or the problems that we might have within the system. Okay, so this in this case, what we do is we add a compressibility factor. So you see, the equation is PV is equal to nRT, nR zero T, and what we do is we include a compressibility factor into it just to compensate uh, for the um, ideal gas because the relationships which which are for ideal gas we have to make it sort of a because we are dealing with the real gas we have to include this compressibility factor into it. So critical path uh, to define this compressibility factor what we know uh, what we need is the critical pressure and the temperature. Now the critical temperature Tc of a liquid is that temperature beyond which the liquid cannot exist means it will either change it to, um, uh, you know, might be converted into vapors or whatever, but the liquid cannot exist. So mo no matter how much pressure is placed on it, it will not um, be in the liquid form, okay? So that's the critical temperature. The second definition is the critical pressure, the pressure that is needed to cause the gas to condense at a critical temperature. Um, to condense at the critical temperature is the critical pressure. So the pressure that is needed to cause the gas to condense at the critical temperature. So it can condense at the critical temperature and that pressure is called as the critical pressure. Now what we do is we make use of this critical pressure. So whatever the pressure that we have within the system, uh, we call it a reduced pressure because we compensate it with with the critical pressure, so reduced pressure is equal to P over PC, where P1, P is the process pressure, and reduced temperature is T over TC, and T is the um, process temperature, and then with the help of these two, and with the help of the chart that is given to us, what we do is we try to find the Z value, okay, the Z value of the, um, from the graph and then we uh, use that Z value in the equation of the ideal gas. Okay, so have a look at this one, this diagram here. Uh, this is called as the uh, Obert-Nelson chart. So what we do is, for example, we calculate the reduced pressure from um, this scale. So on this scale, we have the reduced pressures. These lines are for the reduced temperature. And from the reduced pressure, let's say if we have a reduced pressure of 7, we go up and we try to find the compressibility factor which is given here Z is equal to 0.98 for example in this scenario. Okay, So if we know the reduced pressure and that reduced pressure is equal to 7, based on that I can calculate the compressibility factor. So when I'll be using um, the ideal gas law, laws, I'll have to use this compressibility factor into that equation. 